welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I'm here today with my guest, Lucas Hurl, comedian Lucas Hurl. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Chelsea. Welcome to my apartment. This is great. We got Steven in the background making phone calls. Yeah, fucking up the background noise. Yeah, wearing um, camouflage. Yeah. In I his got own him house. those pants and he wears them every single day. Oh, yeah? If he's wearing the pants. You know, I only have like three things I wear. I have a closet full of stuff, but like, you know, every guy has three outfits he wears religiously really what yeah. is it um when i'm at home i have these nike like sweatpants shorts that i love that like when i work on a computer i always wear um this new york city t-shirt it's kind of like my home uniform mm -hmm. if i go out it's jeans got these dodger vans and then a <laughs> uh, hoodie and a v-neck that's it simple simple very simple yeah so lucas um you are a comedian who works at the comedy store. Yes. You have been there for seven years? Eight. Eight years. Eight years. And um, so how long ago did you move to L.A.? I moved to L.A. It was nine years ago. And I started comedy at the comedy store. Mm -hmm. Hung out there for about five months. And then got hired as a lot guy. Worked a lot for like six months. Then a bunch of bartenders want to go on vacation during the summer. And I had bartended in college, so I just stepped behind there and started doing it. And then I slowly stopped working a lot after about a year. And uh, I've been a bartender ever since. Wait, where did you go to college? University of Iowa. Okay. Do so you know, yeah. What? Joe Marisi and I went to college at the same time. Really? He was there while I was there. Are you the same age? He is maybe a year younger than me. That's so funny. Yeah. He went to Iowa? Yeah. Where's he from? He's from Chicago. But I had a lot of Chicago friends in Iowa. Is Iowa next to Illinois? Yeah. And, I, and University of Iowa is like Eastern Iowa. So it's only like two and a half, three hours from Chicago. Oh, I'm so bad at geography. <laughs> what are the bordering states of Iowa? It's... Um, Indiana. No, no. Okay. Indi Indiana is next to Illinois. Um, I grew up in southeastern Iowa. So I was like two hours from Kansas or from Missouri. Mm -hmm. So I'm from Kansas City. So Missouri to the south, Minnesota to the north, Nebraska to the west, and then South Dakota to the northwest. So did you grow up in a city or like a rural? I grew up rural. very rural. Rural. How yeah. do you say it? Uh, rural. R rural. You can tell how hillbilly someone is, uh -huh. like from the south or from the Midwest, based off of how they say Washington. If they pronounce an R in it and say Washington... <gasps> That's like small town, pretty hillbilly. I never heard that. Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Washington. I have a strong W. Yeah. Yes. A always. confident W. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but if you want to play up the whole small town thing, then you then you know you just talk slow and oh that's good it works to know. every time. Oh, so like if I'm gonna talk, how's yep. my Pe people love to feel smarter than you? <laughs> Who? <laughs> it's everybody. If like you can dumb oh. yourself down mm -hmm. and like. You know, be a country bumpkin. Oh, if you, you've you noticed that when you slow your speech yeah. and talk like that, yeah. you see the people around you like feeling. Yeah. Like Martin Martin style. I tried a character a couple years ago. Yeah. Who uh, wore a cowboy hat and brought a guitar on stage. Really? And I only tried it a few times, but it, it, it was fun. And I brought a guitar on stage and I never played the guitar. Why'd you stop doing it? I, I'll probably go back to it. That just, sounds amazing. Who was the character? Was it like your um, stand up, but just with the outfit? Yeah, he talked slow and he would he would do crowd work and he'd talk to audience members and be like, you know, talk, find a young girl and be like, you're not the kind of woman you bring home to ma. You're the kind of <laughs> woman you bring home to grandma. <laughs> and just like these stupid what? hillbilly sayings. But it, it worked. <laughs> It worked. I love that. You're you're an incredible writer. Thanks. Yeah, I you know, the other night when I was working, we just, you know, I it okay, so what a lot of people don't know is that when you get past at the comedy store, you um start off at these late night 1 a.m. spots. Yeah. And oftentimes the audience is tired, like they don't care, they're not paying attention, they're too drunk, and sometimes there's like an incredible audience. So I'm curious. Okay. So basically what I want to lead into is, you know, 
a week or two ago, yeah. I saw you have the most incredible set I've ever seen anyone have in that late night spot. Thanks. Um, it was literally like a, a 90s BET. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. What are those? Was like a, uh, it was like a night at the Apollo. Uh -huh. Literally, this one guy was falling out of his seat. He had to get up and walk into the other room and he was hyperventilating and holding his ribs. <laughs> and it wasn't like to be cool. It was like, you know, like exaggerating. It was yeah. so genuine. Like everyone was like dying and it was so cool to watch because I haven't seen anyone, you know, I've been working the booth for four years. I see everyone at that spot. I've never seen that type of set before at that time. Thanks, Chelsea. I remember that. It was a Saturday 1.30, and I, I recorded it, had a GoPro on the side of stage, and Randolph told me that afterwards. It really made my night. He's like, dude, I've never seen anyone have to leave. Yeah. Because they were I've laughing. never seen that ever. <laughs> that was fun. I, I watched that set yesterday. Yeah. And uh, Did it capture? It did, because I sat on the stool. Yeah. Which, from filming myself enough, I like to sit on the stool because I pace, and I... You know, you you mean you feel like you can take your time. I, I can take my time. I don't pace. It's more thoughtful. Yes. Yes. And uh, and controlled. Yes. And I, I really take my time if, if I sit down. I like that. I was watching Sarah Silverman, you know, this past weekend there. Notice how much she takes her time. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I definitely like rush through. I'm, I'm a fast talker and I rush through my words. And sometimes I hear myself on stage and feel like. I'm like, oh, I can't even understand what I just said. I feel like, you know, the audience can't. And one time Argus was like, you need to listen to yourself telling the joke, especially, you know, like the setup or else they're not going to, you know. So yeah. I, I, that's something like I, I want to, you know, try to start focusing on. Were you always like that or no, was but, that? But I really believe that everything is funny and that the only reason an audience won't laugh is... You just didn't translate it to them. Hmm. And so if you slow down and take your time, you're less likely to miss something because there's so many times where I won't get a response from the audience and I thought, and then I'll listen to the set and I'll be like, oh, I just, I messed up the setup. That's, but I didn't know that I messed it up. I just am mm -hmm. only counting how many laughs the punch got. Yeah. And how much of a difference waiting, like one or two or three extra or even five seconds yeah you know before saying the punchline like how much of a difference that can make to a joke you've been telling for years yes it's totally do you ever like read old notebooks yeah I d that's what all that is right there so oh, yeah? i've been trying to come up with um clean jokes which is really hard for me so i save all of my old notebooks um and i was and i'm going through that box right now because and just finding a lot of like old stuff and I always find old stuff that's like, oh, this is fu funny. Yeah. And this is a really good joke. And like, why did I never say it? Like, you know, and it won't appeal to me at the time. But it's, it's yeah, I love doing that. Is that? Yeah. No, that's, uh, I've been, I, I've been going through notebooks for years, the mm -hmm. old ones especially. And I'll see these like themes that keep coming up and that I just don't know what to do with then. But five years later, it's like, oh, I know what I was trying to say back then. Yeah. I just didn't know how to say it. Did you find that you were a lot more observational in the beginning? Yeah. I've always been pretty quiet. I don't like people that talk a lot. Well, yeah. Oh, you mean that's one of your things? Yeah. Well, <laughs> have, you, have you ever met somebody before you even see them on stage? And you're like, I know you're not funny because you're just too loud. And you're like trying to be something. Yes. And then you're just like. Yeah, like they're putting something on. Yes. Okay. Yes, like they think they're on stage off when it doesn't. Sometimes translate. you need to be off stage. Huh? Like you ever notice Rock and Chappelle? They're always so quiet. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm I've never been. But I wonder if when they were younger, mm -hmm. if they would, if they were loud, louder. You know. That's true. But like, because I feel not like loud. it's earned. Yeah, it is. It is, but even when it's earned, you have to use it with with caution. I don't know any established comics, actually, now that I think about it, who are, like, running around shouting. Everyone's, like, pretty chill. Yeah. I hate... That's, like, the weird thing to me. It's, like, when people find out you're a comic and if you're, like, a quiet person, they're like, oh, you're not funny. 
Like I would, oh, I'm surprised you're a comic. Like, why aren't you like being funny right now? Yeah. And it's it, like. Not all comedians are funny. Yeah. You, you see that Hannah Gatsby special? Is that, <laughs> Dude, I watched seven minutes of it and I couldn't watch it. I, I got like 10 through. I'll 10 got, minutes through? Yeah. I don't. I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. You need jokes. Well, you know that. Yeah, you need jokes. That's like the <laughs> best way to put it and the best way for us to get out of this one without being assholes. You need jokes. Yeah. I don't care if you're man, woman, dog. Mm-hmm. You need jokes. Yeah. So that night, I was wondering in particular, did that feel like a breakthrough set for you? It did. Did it like feel like it changed? It did. Okay. Sorry. You know those like, because I've been on stage probably, you know, a couple thousand times. Yeah. But you you only remember a few sets. Mm -hmm. I remember my showcase set. I remember that set. Because I went in going in, and I don't know if it's because I smoke pot or what, but I have trouble remembering more than a few things. Uh-huh. Now, I can I, I can remember things in themes, like, hey, I want to go on stage and talk about old people and homeless people, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty jumbled, and there's no, there's no order to it. And I just said, I'm not going to try to remember anything. I'm just going to go. Mm-hmm. And I did. And, Free fall. And the pace was... was perfect yeah i think people appreciate like i i think a lot of people like don't realize that these are like memorized written sets and everyone likes to feel like that improv like spur of the moment that's obviously why people love crowd work so much so i think probably when you take your time and you're kind of like pondering or like figuring figuring your way through like something that people probably are more excited by that. Yeah. Than like a set thing that they, oh, you especially know. Especially because that was one thirty in the morning. Yeah. It's it's hard watching people do material at one thirty. And it's interesting to captivate an audience with a slow pace at one thirty in the morning. Because you really have to pay attention to what someone's saying. Yeah. But that means that they're saying something. I noticed the same thing with Brian Simpson, actually, the other night. Yeah. You know, like it was the uh, Kinnison spot in the main room. Mm -hmm. And um, he, you know, a couple people before him were bombing, you know, people don't want to pay attention anymore. They've seen so much comedy. But like a certain person will come out and like hold themselves on stage and have something to say. And like you'll real, I don't know. And you'll just like lean forward and want to listen to them. Yeah. An older comedian told me just a couple weeks ago, he said, Whatever the person you follow is, be the opposite energy. And I kind of like uh-huh. I've been toying with that for the oh, last two and a half weeks. And it's been fun because I followed I followed Punky that Saturday night. So I could go a little slower. That's good to hear. Because yeah. like sometimes like I'll get nervous if someone's super high energy is right before me. Like I remember like a couple years in... Um, I followed Greg Hahn. Do you know who he uh-huh. is? And he's like super high energy, like like a meth addict, high, like crazy. And he just like, you know, murdered. And I was like so nervous to follow him. And like, you know, kind of was just like, all right, well, I'm going to have a completely different energy. And like then they, you know, and I killed, you know. But then again, you're like riding the wave of something as well. That's sometimes. good riding the wave. Yeah. That, that's what i kind of call trust in the audience too huh yeah like i used to be afraid of like following like rogan or like someone you know who's like really big mm-hmm. but it's actually um better i think because oh, everyone's totally. like excited and in a good mood and then you're just like riding what they set up totally and i i've kind of i'm going through a phase chelsea i think where like personally i find that i've had to bomb twice like when i started I bombed because I just wasn't comfortable and yeah. it wasn't funny. And then after maybe four or five years, you realize kind of what would work. And then I'm f- going through a phase now where you have to bomb again because you got to find out what you really want to talk about. Mm-hmm. If you have 15 minutes to tell the world something. What are you going to say? Yeah. Cause you know, those people that go on stage, it's like, and some, some of them are great because it's their style. But if you, if, Talk about something that matters. I think I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, I, I, are you talking about girls or people? I'm sorry. Not, not people who yeah. go out and they're like, hmm, what do I want to talk about? And it's like, that's. 
Yeah, I mean, there's certain, there's saying? certain topics whenever a comedian brings them up. I'm like, this better be good. Like, uh, and I'll name him by name because I'm <laughs> I, I, I got him hired. But Luke Schwartz. Yeah. Like he has a bit about porn, and I'm thinking every time he does that. Wait, bit, which one? Uh, like it's it's pretty funny. It's about uh, the the step siblings and how you know it's like can we have porn from like healthy families? I you haven't know, heard that, for, but that's a funny idea. Yeah, but every time he brings it up, I'm like, oh, he's talking about porn. This better be good because it's like it's uh, so overdone. Yeah. Um, what else? Like any anything. I remember Burr had a special, and he was like, didn't want to do a great McDonald's bit he had because mm-hmm. it was McDonald's. Mm-hmm. But he's Bill Burr. He, you know, like it's his take on McDonald's. It should trump anybody else's. Yeah. But even he was paranoid. Like, oh, I, I it's cliche, and I get what he's thinking when it comes to that. Even yeah. with these Yelp reviews, I'll write some jokes and I'll be like, I'll ask Brenton or somebody like, is this too easy? Uh-huh. You don't want to see it coming from a mile away. Right. I know. It's so hard to get like the real like left hook sometimes. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about your Yelp reviews, okay. which are hilarious. I, I'm just thankful that you're having me on this podcast and talking with me because I, I thought, so <laughs> I'll start the story with, uh, I put it out on Facebook for it was up there for Were like we the 12 first hours. One? You're the first. You you uh, motivated. You you inspired it because it was so bad. No, it was <laughs> it, it was it was so good. That was the truth of it. But it but I've watched it and it, it it's very mean hearted. It is. <laughs> it's the meanest well, one I've done. It, dude, and it's because you are hating on us finding love. But that's the fu- that's the funny okay. part. And so many people uh, help me with that. Like really, <laughs> I, it, like, it had Mike Schmidt all over it. <laughs> Am I wrong? Not. Uh, joke wise, but I did. Uh, I ran everything by Schmidt. I knew it. Um, who I else? just like it. it just <laughs> I knew who was the, behind that. Oh yeah. No, oh, the devil joke was totally. I forgot what that one was. The only problem I had with it was when I told. Okay, so first explain. Do you want to explain? Yeah. So I, I yelped Chelsea and Steven's wedding because video yelped. I video yelped it because I I was at like table twenty eight with. Steven and are, is my Michael's is he your manager through Steven's no 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 okay so I was at, uh, sitting at one of the last tables <laughs> with uh one of the last one of the last like what do you last mean numbered. by the last oh. like they're all numbered yeah and but it's not by like level of importance it was just, I know I know it's not but <laughs> still small room. but still I'm I, I'm bitter and I'm I'm hating <laughs> so and Curtis the comedy store manager one of my best friends was also there with Haley his great yeah. wife and so I, I love the table but me and Michael Griffin, who uh, you know, ran house manager, were just like waiting to eat. And, yeah. and we're like kind of joking that, well, there's not going to be any food by the time we get up there. And then as we're walking up there, I'm like, I'm going to yelp this wedding. I said to Michael, I said, you know, and then we start joking what's uh, what's going to be wrong with the food when we get up yeah. there. Like the lettuce is wilted. Right, right. And just the act of like judging someone who invited you to something and like... It, it- <laughs> is hilarious if it was and okay so lucas puts out he makes a hilarious mean roasty yeah under a minute yeah um uh yelp video review and posted it on facebook when the video comes out steve and i happen to be on our honeymoon yes at this point we are a week and a half into an incredible (laughs) honeymoon in italy we are relaxed we have been talking about how it's amazing how we have been on vacation for a week and a half and don't feel behind. We don't feel, um, we're just so happy. We feel like we're on like, we're at a level 10 high, like (laughs) just really embraced in like Italy. And like, we wake up to the video and I mean, it, it, it was like the first thing I saw when I woke up in the morning and like, I did not like it. <laughs> Steven didn't like it either, but he like tried to pin it on me and like uh-huh. make it like it was my fault. Uh-huh. Watching it a couple of days later, it is funny, but it felt insulting to me initially just because I felt sensitive because of 
we were on our honeymoon having fun and then like something like punched us in the stomach completely and your wedding was only what two weeks before yeah exactly but the only thing that i like truly had a problem with and more so was embarrassed by was when you critiqued the food because the madonna inn is an awesome place to have a wedding but they're not known for their food their food is like not good to me it is and steve i don't think so and steven really wanted peanut butter and jelly sandwiches which grossed me out i've never eaten one in my life they they like they just like gross me out and he really wanted to have them as an appetizer and it was really important for him to have a say in the planning so he got that thing and the fact that you posted the peanut butter and jelly sandwich picture and talked about it like made me die inside to put it on so because that means now everybody knows about that yeah and like yeah. i'm like petty yeah. and like you know, embarrassed by that. And that's why I was like, no, yeah. like I felt foiled. Do you want me to cut that out? No, it's fine. <laughs> no, but the funniest part about that is they were cut into triangles. To yeah. Me. Well, it, but it was, the food was amazing. Really? And I thought Madonna in like they yeah. have that nice restaurant in it. Yeah. I, we like, I don't know. I think like their catered event food isn't like their steakhouse. Food. Chelsea, you had one of the best weddings I've ever been to. And I've been to a <laughs> few you. and that's, that's, uh, that's why I made the video. Yeah. Because if I honestly liked it, or if you know, if I if I hated it, I wouldn't have. Totally, I. It was just at the time I just felt embarrassed, but now that the time has passed and I see that you've done plenty of these videos and they're all so funny, we feel honored and want you to put it back up. Thank you, thank you. I will. I so will. I'll pick the right time. You made this video. It was it was very funny, and you got good feedback from it. Yeah, and then I and then I. Uh, got a text from you and I, I I, and, and, it, and it said hey can you please take it or steven and i don't like the video please take it down and i don't and then know you didn't take it down for 24 I hours didn't take it, and then i didn't I was take like, it down what the fuck was it 24 i thought it was like 12 oh it felt like 24. it was like a friday night and a saturday morning you texted me back because i thought i didn't know if you were joking yeah i had no idea how to read you or steven I, just, I thought you wanted to squeeze out a couple more likes that's exactly <laughs> And I would too. Yeah. And I would too. It, it was very popular for the it was for the yeah. time it was on Facebook. And also, I think like a lot of people like probably. I mean, like obviously, like this sounds like a dick thing to say, but I know that me and Stephen have a good relationship, and I think like people would like to see someone making fun of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. It, it, it's I, bringing you know, it down to like earth. fuck those people. Yeah. Yeah, you congratulations. You're you come across as happy people. And people want to bring you down. Yeah. I wish somebody would bring and you down. And I wish down. I saw it that way and yeah. felt like got off on well, that. Well, that's the funniest part too that I had to think about a couple months later. It's like you guys were on your honeymoon. I just envisioned you like in a boat on a river in Italy and like where we wouldn't see it. <laughs> well, no, yeah, or still seeing it and like me fucking that up for you. Like that great. There, was there a part of that that was like, fuck you guys? No, no, but that was funny to me that I, I envisioned you in Italy, like doing something really nice and romantic yeah. or whatever. And like, I'm I'm in both y'all's head. <laughs> and know? it's true. We woke up in <laughs> Tuscany. It was beautiful. Like we had a gorgeous view. We went on a walk that morning, but we couldn't stop talking about the video. And we're like, we should be enjoying this day. And yeah, we could I'm not. Sorry. It's okay. It's funny. <laughs> but um, the Brussels sprouts are great. I didn't have them. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I didn't have uh, I didn't have the hot dogs, which looked... Again, something I didn't want. But it was such a great wedding. And had I known that I would do more of these, uh-huh. I would have really like played it up. Because I really just made it kind of as a dumb present for you and Steven uh-huh. to like commemorate, you know... But if I knew that, like, it would be a thing, I yeah, would have I'll really... share it, as a matter of fact. Okay. <laughs> that would be huge. Because I, play... I, pl- I would have played up, like, really the ridiculous of, of you know, rid- ridiculousness of your wedding. Like, yeah. you know, Steve-O was there uh-huh. and just showed a picture of him with the polka dot suit. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't think it'd be really a, ser- you know, a, a thing I would do. Yeah. So you continued making more yeah. videos. Yeah. What right. else did you do? Ari Manis asked me to do his birthday next. Oh, yeah. That and, was great. I did his birthday, and then I just would do stupid things. And I, would, I think it's fun to judge things. You know, I, I think... I no right judging. Yeah. I And I didn't know you to be that person. Yeah. Which was a surprise. Yeah. And you're great at it. Have you ever done nice. Rose Battle? 
No. Um, You'd probably be really good at it. I probably would, but it's it's a little too ha- hater filled. I think the shocking part is that you are like the nicest person. Yeah. You know, you come off, and I still believe you are. Yeah. You know, you're a very nice, like gentle person. So I think it was surprising and like felt like so unlike you when I saw it initially. And I was like, I was like, Mike Schmidt put him up to this. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, Schmidt, Schmidt, I respect. Because we're very similar. Like, mm-hmm. we're both, he's from Wisconsin, I'm from Iowa. We're both Midwestern nice and have, like, mm-hmm. probably very loving families. But with that comes a very, like, dark, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Schmidt, Schmidt has, Schmidt could be a serial killer. I love him. I do too. He, it, and, yeah, and that's why he means I love so him. much to me. Yeah. Yeah. Biddlecombe's actually the same way. Biddlecombe has a dark side and a dark uh, sense yeah, of humor. Yeah, Stephen's that's, mentioned that. Yeah. And, and, and we want it to come out more on stage. Completely. Oh, yeah. completely. That's his voice. I want that. Yes. That's like, his real voice. Like, you know, voice. if you see him kind of fight with like a heckler, you see it come out and it's and it's great. You see how smart he is. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's lethal smart. So something about these videos, I think like the best things sometimes are made by people who didn't like know what almost like an accidental thing yeah and that was your wedding that was your the whole wedding uh like ari Mm -hmm. manis and i and and abby like the next morning when we're at brunch Mm -hmm. you know with your friends and family we're just at that point we're just looking at stuff to judge we're like (laughs) the eggs are dry (laughs) dude the breakfast like wasn't even there i mean they really (laughs) fucked up did they i mean they like we like paid for this breakfast that like was like underserved basically okay whatever okay i just remember a- scrambled eggs fruit i can't even by yeah. the time i got there everything was gone and I had then, a dry and then there was the clips of like you know you signing your marriage license and all yeah, that yeah yeah um the uh, stripper Chelsea, dancing it was one of the best weddings I've, it, it was Thank one you. it was one of the best weekends of my life really yeah it was so much fun it was so cool to have everyone in one place and i really think like the like slight uh, I don't think it was like a full on destination wedding because when you say destination, you think of like Mexico or something. But to have everyone all in one place away for a weekend where everyone's kind of forced to really just spend the time together felt like really special, especially to have everyone three hours away, like all there. You know, there's like a picture of everyone from the store that I posted recently on my Instagram, like all the guys. Yeah. And like it, it was just so cool and special to have like everyone together yeah yeah three hours away was perfect because it was right it was like a ranch off the interstate it felt like they had cows they had yeah which like isn't fully my thing but like it it, it just was the setting so it is so in their stand-up and i have to do a side note on this Uh or okay let's finish the yelp thing Uh uh-huh and then come back yeah. to this. I have a Whole Foods is, video coming out tomorrow. Okay, so you have a Whole Foods video coming out tomorrow. Which so did you just go back to Iowa? Yeah, I was Iowa. In Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. Iowa. 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 I made it into a different word. Yeah, it's okay. it's that in Ohio, the only states with three vowels hmm. and one consonant in there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's tricky. Very funny video, and you know we were just talking about how this should be something bigger. I think you're onto something super funny and it's, um, what I like about it. Yeah. It reminds me of the soup, but, um, they're very like punchy. Like they're very like joke, 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 joke. Yeah. Which is like, and there, and there's like a couple dark ones thrown in, but it's not like, (laughs) it's not like in your face. It's like a fun surprise almost. Okay. Yeah. You know, what I mean? like a yeah. Russian nesting doll. Yeah. Yeah. I I really try to cut all the fat out of these mm-hmm. because I'm putting them on social media right now, mm-hmm. and I think that's also kind of the future. Like, there's a couple other shows I want to mm-hmm. start, and it's the same. It's uh-huh. a similar format, just less than a minute and a half. Which is great because it's like that's the attention span people have. Yeah. You get in, sit, get the joke out, and that's it yeah yeah bamming out and then uh so yeah i have a couple other shows i'm gonna get started here but where can people watch those um just follow me at lucas or uh, i have a website too lucas com, but it's it's um have you put them up on youtube not yet 
Mm-hmm. I have a Vimeo page, like an old school guy, just because you know, I've been shooting sketches for years. Really? Jeremiah Watkins and I used to do a sketch a week at one point. Huh. And that was pretty hell because that's a lot of work. Yeah. But yeah, and you know, and looking back, it's a lot of the old stuff I did. It's not necessarily funny, but I learned different editing techniques. Mm-hmm. And I also think that, you know, good stand-up comedians are great editors. Yeah, it's the yeah, same yeah. Beat. Quick. Yep. It's all about rhythm. So I, I love to edit Chelsea. Do you, when you're making these, do you sit down and write? Do you, t- like, what's the process? Are you taking the pictures taking a ton of pictures yeah and then sitting down and literally writing out like a page of jokes or like what's the yeah yeah exactly i go to an event like oh this weekend i'm going to the wwf royal rumble in phoenix so it's gonna be (laughs) why we've done it every year like three years in a row we've gone to whatever city it's in me and uh a bunch of people you'll love um (laughs) (laughs) me and uh josh martin Uh. matt edgar tony hinchcliffe johnny scordis Uh uh-huh um chris burns willie hunter um i think we have a couple others going with us this time too the crew the crew like we're all wrestling fans from now i feel like i remember seeing a picture of that in the past yeah yeah we've done it a couple years in a row so with this next video i kind of want to hit that about how you know it's going to be like seven dudes in an airbnb and it's, yes. it's a little gay that's that's yeah i like that and the royal rumble it's 40 men or 30 wrestlers in yeah. one ring so it's really gay. It's super gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, that's kind of what I think when I go into mm. this is like, what angle do I want to take on whatever mm. I'm judging? That's a good idea. So, yeah. So with the Whole Foods, I had to think, and I had a girlfriend help me, and she's like, yeah, you're small town. You don't want this here. And it's yeah. like, yeah, this doesn't fit in. Yeah. So once I have an angle, I, I have a point of view to write from. Mm-hmm. And so I'll write jokes for five or six days. And then I'll get that first batch out. And then there's a few people that I trust that I run them by. Mm -hmm. And they help a lot because, you know, when you run jokes by friends, they just get your mind thinking in places it wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. And so I'll do that for about two rounds. And based off of like the third or fourth draft, those are pretty ready to go. And then I have a, a green screen in my apartment and I have lights and all the get up. Really? Yeah. Huh. And so, like last Friday afternoon, Matt Edgar came over and directed me, and we just... It's great. Thanks. Yeah, and I like it that it's to the camera and not to... I don't think you were talking about how you feel like it needs to be to like an audience or something. Yeah. I think it's better to the camera, which is prepping you for the show that I hope you get doing this. Thanks. I mean, mean? the way I figure it, Chelsea, is like, I'm doing a show. So if people yeah. want to get behind it or, you know, buy it, whatever, like I'll still make it. It's not, I don't want anyone else's permission. Yeah. And I, I like, that's why I taught myself. Like I worked in video games for eight years while I was a bartender and a lot guy. And so I, I have production experience and mm-hmm. I know how to do that stuff. And so you edit it, you edit everything yourself Yeah. on iMovie? Um, no, I, I, I use iMovie with my cell phone, but yeah, Final Cut or Adobe, but usually Final Cut if it's just me. Yeah. Yeah, it looks yeah. good. Yeah. So in your stand-up, what I notice is that you talk a lot about, well, you compare women to farm animals. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know what it's like to live in Iowa. Did you grow up like, did you grow up on a farm? My grandparents were farmers, so whenever... You know, their farm was about 50 minutes away from us. Mm -hmm. So we'd go there every few weekends. And whenever my parents would go on vacation, like... They'd watch you. Yes. So like our vacation was go to the farm. And it was great because we never had to do any chores. But we just got to... You didn't? No, we didn't have to do any like... Why not? Um, Because by that point, there were... They had hired help? Kind of hired... Yeah, there was hired help. A ranch hand? Yeah. or or, (laughs) Yeah. They just, you know, they just didn't need my 10 year old self. Yeah. You didn't have to milk the cow? No. And looking back, you, I don't have know you why. Ever? I've milked a cow, yeah. Tell me about I've that. milked a goat. I have no it's idea what it's like to milk a cow. It, it's, it's, this sounds really. Have you ever drank stoop- it straight from the nipple? Um, like just kind of being funny? I think I probably have. Yeah, well. 
I was a kid. kid. Does fresh milk taste different yeah, it than the milk? Yeah, it tastes pretty gross. It's not like... What's the difference it's between... It's not cold. <laughs> okay, so it's like warm milk. It's lukewarm. What's the difference between the milk that comes straight from the cow as opposed to the milk that you get in the store? Like, like the taste. Other than pasteurization. Oh, what does that mean? It's where they like s- s- heat it over a long period of time. They heat it? Yeah, and get the bacteria out. So can you get sick from drinking fresh milk? You can, yeah. Raw milk is uh, it's a it's a uh, questionable topic. Some people really? really believe that it has good bacteria, and other people think it gets huh. you sick. And what about churning butter? Churning butter. I've never. Or is that butter. like another a thing of another time? Um, I think of Amish people, and I think of churning okay. butter more. But you know, there's still old school farmers that did it. Like, have you ever like carried a chicken upside down and like hacked it off? No, but my <laughs> grandma did. And my wa- grandma's a sweet old lady, and when I found out just recently that she would chop the heads off of chickens, it was pretty, pretty surprising. Like behind a shed, was there a wood table with like a hacksaw? I think there was a barn <laughs> with I don't know what went down in there. <laughs> like what? I'm like thinking of like what I would imagine would happen there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what goes down in a barn stays in a barn. Like it's. Do you it, know? Like, did you grow up with people who had hooked up with like animals as a joke? I mean, not that I know of. No, I don't. But you know, that. you know what? That growing up on a farm that really sticks to me to this day is there's a kid in our school in our class growing up who always smelled like like you know he smelled like a farm. And now we know why. Yes, he he was one of these like kids that had to wake up every day at five a.m. to uh-huh. do chores, and he sounded like the biggest fucking hillbilly really yeah the hugest hillbilly like he, how do some people sound like that versus he just talked all country you couldn't understand anything he said he just but like you couldn't understand this guy his words were so blurred together and he had such a hillbilly accent his name was aaron nonacoban what up aaron what up aaron I, he doesn't listen to podcasts he's so freaking you know honest, but how though. does some so you went to school with him so yeah. how does some people catch that accent and others don't do things because he grew up on a farm like his he his whole family were farmers so he had to do all the chores and work his ass off and then go to school chores make you have that accent like i don't get i don't know you know what i mean yeah i i don't know where the accent came from but he didn't sound like the smartest guy but damn it chelsea he messed up every freaking curve we had in school because he would get (laughs) straight he'd talk like a hillbilly Uh he'd get 98 to 100 on every test wait really yeah and he would fuck up the curve so he was smart he was genius whoa and and i would be like you know just like so just natural naturally smart like they did home like farmers kids did homework for fun because their life was so crappy because they weren't that's they weren't gonna need like a degree yeah or like a uh yeah diploma like they their life was going to continue to be farming. School was just to get them schooling. Yeah. I know smart. I know people that got straight A's and dropped out of school to farm. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. It's interesting that someone would be intelligent, but then talk like that because you associate that with someone being stupid. So I wonder if it's people who like put it on. Yeah. I, I Well, Chelsea, I don't underestimate well, anybody after that. After that, I'm like... You know, you could be the janitor at a McDonald's and uh, you could have an IQ of 150. Uh-huh. So I, I have no expectations of people. I treat everyone I try with respect because mm-hmm. you don't know who's going to be the hillbilly that, you know, is a freaking goodwill hunting genius. Yeah. Did you have like a lot of um, like keg parties? Was that like the high school life? They are. Yeah, usual. Like farm parties. They always say you haven't, you know, you're not Midwest if you had a caker in a cornfield. <laughs> I went <laughs> to this, like, do you know how to shuck corn? Is that yeah. where, what's like the whole corn thing? There's chucking corn. There's detasseling corn. That's what's a big, detasseling? It's where you like separate the seed from the kernel from the, uh, you do it in the fields. You don't do it anymore, but kids used to do it when I was growing up because it's very, you know, it's one of the few jobs you can get is like a 12 year old. Uh huh. And it's very dirty, but you're walking cornfields and you're just separating like corn stalks. In overalls? Uh, you can wear overalls if you want. You wear like clothes you don't give a shit about because you get yeah. muddy and you, you get sunburnt. Your What's hands. with the overalls? I don't know. I, I've tried to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I've, I've always wondered. I've even tried to throw an overall bit into You that. need one. Oh, I have. Well, I just, you know, if you're wearing overalls, I think you're racist. Okay. That's... Because it's like, just the dress of it's a... Just the, it's just the uniform of a racist to me. Yeah. But uh, I have a lot of baby pictures of me in overalls, so uh -huh. I'm not going to... Little baby racist. Yeah. Like, overalls are cute on babies and what old is people. It, <laughs> <laughs> what is it about, like, how did those become a thing? Like, is there, like, a... I, that's a great question. I have no idea. Yeah. Because they are... They look so uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, unbuckling your chest to take a piss or whatever. It's It's... Yeah, they look terrible. I don't know why they're a thing. Do you, so you, since you grew up in like, I'd say, when I think of Iowa, I think of corn. Yeah. Um, Monta, what's that thing called? Monsanto. Mon Monsanto? Yeah. Yeah. So wh what, w what is the whole deal with that? So there's not a lot of family farms in Iowa anymore because there are a lot of corporation owned. But you know? was it, did that change over the time when you were growing up? Yeah. Yeah, totally. It used, like, when did that kind of come around? Honestly, I, I was very lucky being a kid in the 90s because that was kind of, to me, the last of the family farm. Really? You know, yeah, even my grandparents um, have since sold, you know, all the land. Both my grandparents owned a lot of land, and they all sold it to, I assume, you know, corporations. that. Did that change because of, like, places like McDonald's being franchised and needing, like, higher production? Like, I, I don't get so. it. Yeah. I'm just pulling that out of my ass. No, no, it, it is because a lo so much of the food is, you know, 80% or something like that of, of corn that's made is used to feed cattle. It's used to feed animals. 80, okay, hold on. 80% of corn being yeah. made is actually used for food yes, for cattle. Yes, for, for, ca for cattle okay. and, and, you know, feed for... Well, isn't that true that it makes them fat? Yeah. So it's like people say that you shouldn't eat, like, corn. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, may, cows aren't meant supposed to, to stomach Who's it. Who is it? Who, it's for pigs, right? I don't know who it's from. I think, I think it's, it's for pigs. Is it? Well, you know. Why it, does corn make you fat? Because you can't break it down? I I don't know. It's okay. it's higher in sugar than you most should vegetables. This. I should <laughs> know this. We have sweet corn days every year where it's a parade where we celebrate corn. What is it called? Uh, uh, sweet corn. Ooh. Sweet corn serenade. I bet serenade. you know all types of ways to make I corn. I do. I do. And, <laughs> uh. It, it does make you fat, mm -hmm. um, but so when you see like a fat chick on a farm, you're like she's been eating a lot of corn. She's corn fed. Is that is that a thing? Corn fed. Corn fed. You've heard the term corn fed, right? I don't know. It sounds like something I've heard, but like I can also just be making that up. In no, my head. no, it's it's something real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of corn fed women. I'm talking about on stage now, but like. I had a girlfriend that ate a lot of ranch dressing and just like that kind of <laughs> Why are like, why is it that like, um, the whole like image of farmers is that like, it's like, never mind. I'm not going to say it. Let's say it. Well, why? <laughs> what, racist? Okay, no, not racist, said. but I feel like, okay. So I'm going back to your joke with the farm girls. Okay. Looking like, farm animals yeah. so is it true like why is it that the girls mostly do the girls mostly look like that i mean like i feel no, like this is a no, conversation that's, that's that mean and i'm i'm not i'm not that i, I, I i'm say, not pointing it out that yeah. you're mean i'm truly wondering is that what most of the girls looked like when you're growing up and if so i wonder why that is is but i feel like this sounds like me and, and i just want to point out that i'm <laughs> ignorant and i have no idea what i'm talking about hey. and i'm sorry i'm really just finding words and this happens to be recorded and i feel like you can't even say these things anymore i'm just curious hey chelsea i'm ignorant and i'm going but... off of stereotypes yeah, we're so showed. ignorant by the way <laughs> i'm just checking the time for you um it's at 5 51 we're okay, good perfect okay um you know what it is is the women there are more alpha then, really yeah so this whole kind of me too feminist movement that's going on i'm thinking like you know i talk to my female cousins and my sisters in iowa and it's it doesn't affect them as much because they are already strong women like mm. I, you know my mom was a farm girl and she milked cows and i've i've said it before but i'm lucky my mom wasn't like a butch lesbian because she she's a grew up a tough you know she grew up as a dairy farmer's daughter who was the oldest and had to do 
you know that was her day in day out yeah. milk and cows yeah so and I, so it's important that she made you know what it was like and have that work ethic so i yeah. joked that she would like make up chores for us to do mm-hmm. just to just to instill that work ethic what kind of chores um well we lived in a town so like we had to play they were stupid too we had to play the piano me and my brother that's not a chore it was a chore we had to practice the piano learning. at <laughs> 6 30 and 7 a.m every day okay that's yeah. interesting yeah um, and just like, Wait, that, are you good? I can be, yeah. Huh. It, I, I need to refresh, but I played, I had to do a bunch, I had to play the cello and stuff. Really? I had to do weird stuff. That's interesting. My mom made me play the cello. Huh. <laughs> and, uh. Is she a classical music fan? She wanted to be, or she's a. She wanted to be a <laughs> classical music fan. <laughs> she listened to the worst crap growing up. She listened to like Kenny G and uh, Phil Collins and all this stuff. Uh-huh. So, uh. Yeah, my parents divorced and they listened to the same divorce station. Is it normal for divorce in a, like farm areas? Because you, you would think that that's like the life is like they have their wife and that's yeah. that. No, I know. And that's kind of what I've been, I've been talking about on on stage is that everybody I know in Iowa is, is divorced or divorced. Really? I'm surprised I just, to hear that. Yeah. I have friends uh, that were a couple since we were nine years old and they'd been together for 20 plus years and they just divorced. And when mm-hmm. I found that out at Christmas, I'm like, there's no hope for anybody. Yeah. My grandparents divorced in their eighties. Wow. What's the point? Right. That's the, whole, yeah, <sighs> it's, it, it is, but you're never too old to find happiness. Chelsea, yeah. And, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I have an optimistic view, but I also, I'm a realist when it comes to that because I've seen a lot of farmers that have this seemingly normal life and like, you know, even that, even what little they have can be taken away. Like farmers, they're, I, I always piss me off because I, I was a big baseball player as, as a kid mm-hmm. and whenever it would rain and we'd have games canceled, People be like, "Oh, the rain's good for the farmers." I'm thinking, "Fuck the farmers." Yeah. But if it didn't rain, if they, you know, they'd be out of work. Yeah. If they'd be out of. So a lot of the food that's made in Iowa is used to feed millions of people in mm-hmm. the world. Mm-hmm. Millions. And I was in Iowa with Bill Burr a couple of years ago, and he made a great point. He's like, "You know, the coast. They look down on the Midwest like they're stupid. It's like, you know, these people make your food." Yeah. He's like, and you know, did he say that and get an applause break? He did. And he said, you know, you, y'all in New York, they, you know, you think you're special because you design websites. Is that right? It's like these people fucking make food. Your job, yeah. your job is really nothing yeah. compared to what these people do. Yeah. So what yeah. were you saying about Monsanto? I think I interrupted you. Oh no. So a lot of corporate, uh, corporate owned farms now, mm-hmm. not many family farms like there used to be. Um, growing up, we used to go to not Monsanto, but it's called Cargill. They're the biggest, one of the biggest, uh, corn syrup makers. Mm -hmm. So we'd go to Cargill as kids and take field trips to their, and throw shit in there. To their death factory. Throw some garbage in. Yeah. I mean, it's already garbage. I don't know what we could make it worse, you know? Uh huh. Yeah. And they would tell us, Hey, this is where they make Pepsi and Coke. And we're kids and thinking this is cool. Oh, because corn syrup. Yeah, but now as adults, it's like, oh, that's the shit that's killing us. Yeah, and that's we were just going going there once a year to, you know, these jolly old factory workers. Mm-hmm. It's like the cigarette. It's like going on vacation to the cigarette, com- you know, yeah. factory. Grow um. So growing up in Iowa and then moving to Los Angeles was yeah. there uh like an initial culture shock that you experienced? Oh yeah, I still I still feel it. What do you think about like the um? I want to know in what way. And then like, what do you think about the way, you know, and being in the entertainment industry and seeing like kind of what people value here Mm -hmm. versus what you kind of grew up with, which is probably like a lot more, you know, important, obviously. You know what I mean? To kind of just see the difference there and like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people here have, people here do matter and they are important. Not Do you find yourself, as... though, getting less caught up in the bullshit? Oh, yeah. Because but... you know another. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, that's a good question. Of... I totally do, but it's not necessarily a good thing, Chelsea. Like, I'm not a big social media guy, and I need to be better at that as a comedian, but. I hate social media. You do, and everybody, most people do. That's why I think people who are on it all the time aren't 
probably the happiest. Yeah, because it's, it, it's a problem. Yeah. You know, we were talking before this, like, to me, most of my fans and family are still on Facebook mm-hmm. and they're not on Instagram because what pretty things are they taking pictures of? Mm-hmm. So, you know, like they don't, they don't think like that to record every m- minute of, of what they're doing. And yeah, that's a huge culture shock to me. Yeah. For me, like Instagram is for like celebrities, hot chicks and like guys that want to fuck hot chicks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, good... I don't know. I mean, I just made that up, but no, like, it is. It, I don't know. It, it's and uh, fitness motivation. Yeah, That's what... it's just like I don't know. For me, like I just find it making me like jealous, insecure, depressed. Yeah, you know, getting stuck in compare and despair. I, I talk about this a lot on the podcast yeah. with every guest because I want to know if they're experiencing like the same thing, and I think it's gotten so much worse. Yeah, oh, and I, I hate the fact that you have to like promote yourself as a comedian. You have to go on, and then every time you go on, you're like, "Oh, they're doing that, and they're doing this," and it's like I don't even want to look through the feed anymore. I just want to post and get off. But you know, it's a habit to like watch people's videos and see this and that. And it's like I don't think I've ever like not been on Instagram and like haven't been affected by something. Yeah, like getting off and feel better. Yeah, and yeah. then I hate that I'll let something affect me. Yeah. You know, totally. No, I feel it too. And I check it every morning. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty good at just, you know, usually right when I wake up, I'll do my computer rounds. And then after that, I stay offline and I'll put my phone in airplane mode when I'm riding. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the best? It's the best. And I do it a few hours a day. Uh huh. Just because, like, I, I can't you know, let my stream of consciousness be broken if I'm in, if I'm into something. Yeah. I, um, today I like got a new phone. So it was like at Verizon and I had to leave it there for like an hour and a half to like yeah. transfer. And I like had to take my car to get washed and I, or like it had to get detailed. So like for an hour I didn't have that. So I was just like walking around and I had a notebook with me and I just like, so much came to me and it was so nice to not have either one. Yeah. And just to be like with the world and a part of the world and, um, and so much more like interesting thought, you know, I'm, I'm working on something right now, writing and, yeah, and I just felt like so much more like connected, you know? And I just like, I love that idea of like leaving the phone at home now. Yeah, no, I, I'm huge into that. Like, I don't walk with headphones. Mm -hmm. I do simple things. And I also used to exercise every day. I've cut that down a little bit, but that's really old farmer blood of like (laughs) just routine. Yeah. Routine and feel like. You're probably good at routine because of that. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing with like uh, the whole idea of just being out in the middle of a field Mm -hmm. because that's how my grandfathers were. Like they just worked by themselves in the middle of the field with their own you know, probably a little racist thoughts <laughs> and like they just had to live in their own head and how hard that is because, you know, our generation has all these escapes, but you know, I've, I've gone on a couple dates with girls and it's like, I'll know within five minutes, like you're, you know, you're obsessed with your phone or, you mm-hmm. know, like your priorities are, you know, your mind is, yeah is way off. And then know. do you get turned off and you're not want yeah. to see them again yeah just live in the moment you know yeah. I, I meditate every morning you do like a weirdo yeah do you do tm um i i don't or like a guided i've thing studied trans i mean i yeah the trans the maharishi institutes in fairfield iowa it's a small iowa town mm-hmm. it's where they they teach a lot of transcendental and um so i I, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it. Mm-hmm. I just 20 minutes, I'll, uh, I'll, you know, say Siri, set an alarm for 20 minutes, mm-hmm. put the phone in airplane mode. I sit on this wooden stump stool mm-hmm. that my uh, uncle, who's a professional wood carver, carved. Ooh. And, uh, and then I'll just let my thoughts wander mm-hmm. and I won't judge them. And that's it. And then I'll get in a zone. The, my, the alarm will go off. You know, I've had, you know, girlfriends like, you know, see me meditating in the morning. Like, are you meditating? It's like, yeah, you know? Yeah. Problem? No, yeah. (laughs) And, uh, 
And then I'm on my thinking stump. Yeah, <laughs> I, it is. It, it's it's Feng Chao's even seen connected it to the earth. It. Yeah, it is. It's really beautiful. Actually, he's he's an amazing. He goes to state fairs and he carves shit out of wood. Nice. And then like burns it with fire and makes art. Hmm. Um. And that sets me up for the day. And that's yeah. I am not a very anxious person. I don't want to give off that vibe to people. There's so when people lose their shit over small things in this world, you know, I, I I'm pretty good at not doing that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. So you don't get mad when you drive. Um, when I drive that's different because <laughs> I get really pissed when I drive. But like, you know, Bill Burr's the same way. Burr's a very quiet guy off stage. Mm-hmm. But like when he's driving, he does like, you know. And I think with me it's because I, I don't like stupid stupid people are fine if they're in their own, you know, danger zone. But when you're driving and you're dumb, then you have a weapon. Mm-hmm. And so when people aren't like paying attention while they're driving or they're like, then I'm a di- I'm a I'm a huge dick when I drive. I yeah. swear all the time. Um, it's also why I probably work out just in case like road rage ever gets me in a fight. Yeah, <laughs> because I am. <laughs> then you'll I, be ready. I, I, yeah, I'm a dickhead when I drive. <laughs> I don't drive like a dick, but I yeah, I I defend my turf definitely. Love it. Well, Lucas, I know that you have to yeah go to work. I don't want to. Yeah, it's it's five oh eight. This is awesome. Are you gonna Chelsea? be late? I'll be fine. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for uh, yeah. not five oh eight. Whatever. Thank you so much for coming on. Is that the um, new phone? Yeah. Is it the? Isn't it XS? so big? I hate it. It's the XR. Okay, so you have the. It's too big. I like a small phone. This like mm-hmm. I can't even like walk around with it on the street because I'm too afraid I'll it drop it. Big. It doesn't fit in my hand. No. Um, it's like a Palm Pilot. It is. But uh, I'm grateful. It's an iPad mini. Grateful I got a new one, I guess. I don't want to be a dick. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on. And um, thank you for uh, especially talking about the Yelp and yeah. letting me. Where can people find I, I don't you know and see I, more? Um, please follow me at Lucas Hurl. And I'll, you know, I do one every couple weeks. I already know the next one. And then I have a couple other shows I'm going to do. So I think social media is kind of the way to do it. Mm-hmm. Come see you at the comedy store every yeah, week. Yeah, I'm there at 1230 tonight. Nice. Yeah, I'm very lucky. And then I'll be in Phoenix this weekend. Cool. So Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, just remember to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>